Welcome back everyone. Today I want to talk about one of the most valuable minerals in the world that few in the West actually know how to recognize. It might be right under your feet and you'd never even know it. But first, no one was able to guess the mineral in the Guesser Rock Winter Rock contest. And the answer, as you may have guessed by now, is the title of today's video. This is actually jade, believe it or not. Uh, in fact, this one's cut on the back, and you can see what I mean by it being a wolf in sheep's clothing. It's actually green inside, and it's, it's actually translucent too. I'll show you when I get the tripod out and I can use both hands and put a flashlight up to it, but here's a piece that actually came from the same rock. Or, oh, I'm sorry, this came from a rock that I found right next to this one, but you can see how similar they are. And look what it hides inside. Boy, you just never know if you were looking at these rocks. This one I had in the video, and if you paid really close attention, you might have been able to see some of the green on this. And later I'll take a grinder and grind some of this down. And uh, I'll show you how that turns from uh, something that you may not recognize to, well, when you sand it down, it actually is green. So to be more exact, this is actually what's called nephrite. It's referred to as jade, but there's another... Uh, common mineral, well, not common, but there's another mineral, this is all nephrite, there's another uh, mineral that's also referred to as jade, but is found mostly in, uh, I think like Myanmar, or southeastern Asia, or Central America, and that's uh, jadeite, which is chemically different, very similar, but chemically different from the nephrite that we find over here. Uh, the, the largest production region for nephrite is actually in Canada. So I did give some hints in the video, and uh, I also gave, after nobody solved it after the time limit, I started giving some hints in the comments. Uh, but I'll go over those, a, a few of them here at least, uh, about how you might have solved this, which also is how you might be able to identify jade in the field. So jade is derived from amphiboly materials uh, like tremolite and act actinolite. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I think this uh, nephrite here is actually derived from tremolite, which uh, also is very similar to another material. Can you see that? The fibers in there? Tremolite is known as uh, asbestos, but this is a highly metamorphosed uh, version of asbestos. Uh, what I was showing you with these feathers and wedges is that even though jade is, or this nephrite is about six to six and a half hardness, it's not really hard, but it is a tough rock. I, I couldn't drive, I couldn't break the rock with these feathers and wedges. It was just popping pieces off the side of it. The reason that is, is because when, uh, you know, the, the fibrous structure, where's that one at? The, the uh, fibrous structure of the tremolite kind of uh, interweaves on itself and under pressure and temperature, it metamorphoses into something that looks crystalline. But actually, if you look at this under a microscope, it's a bunch of, still it's a bunch of fibers interwoven. So when you try to split it in half by force, it's like trying to trying to pull apart, you know, like uh, one of those straps. And by the way, those are jade too. I don't know if you noticed those in my uh, previous videos, but uh, those are some really big chunks of jade. It's the same stuff as as this. Okay, so uh, another clue. Most of the guesses I got were uh, people guessing that these were rocks and not minerals. But um, one clue when when you hear people talk about uh, hardness, like if I'm saying it's it's six on the Mohs scale. Uh, that's generally in reference to minerals because rocks are assemblages of minerals and all the minerals inside the rocks can have different hardnesses. So it's kind of hard to refer to a rock like granite. It's kind of hard to say what hardness granite is because there's a lot of stuff inside of it. So uh, that was another clue that these uh, were minerals and not rocks. Um, also, I had mentioned that this rock was cut, which you can see it was. Uh, one thing, and this is, I'm not sure how accurate this is, but I use it quite a bit. Uh, if, if you look at the color of the cuttings, the color of the cuttings often relate to the color of the streak of the rock. So in a way, I, I thought I was giving you an indirect streak test. And uh, in this case, the streak of jade, I think it's clear uh, of nephrite. I'd have to check. It's either white or clear. So it's hard to tell the difference between white or clear, but that was another uh, kind of clue to narrow down some of the of the potential mineral suspects. Um, also, some guess that there may have been iron in this material, which is correct. This is actually a weathering rind on the outside. I think it's due mostly to chemical weathering and 
the iron ends up oxidizing. But as it turns out, the thing that gives nephrite its green color is iron. So I mentioned that these minerals were being found in relation to what I thought was amphibolite, and there was also diabase uh, intrusions nearby. So diabase is a mafic rock, which means that it's high in magnesium and iron, which is also another clue. I don't know how accurate this is, but these are the things as prospectors that we need to pay attention to. Nephrite jade is, uh, if you look at the chemical formula, it has magnesium and iron in it. Also, the diabase intrusion next to this amphibolite gives the potential for there being some contact metamorphism which uh, means that any of these amphibolite materials, uh, or sorry, amphiboly materials that were adjacent to this diabase dike could have been um, experiencing a, a lot more heat when it, everything was underground than the materials nearby. So there was a potential for some contact metamorphism, which means that some of these amphiboly materials can grade into higher metamorphic materials like jade. And finally, um, this doesn't help for anyone who hasn't seen any of my other videos, but if you have seen some of my other videos, you realize that I've moved out of the Mojave Desert in the southwest in Nevada, and uh, I've moved to Wyoming. And the state mineral in Wyoming is nephrite jade. So here's the end cut to this piece of nephrite that was in the video, and I had promised to give this out as a prize. Even though nobody guessed correctly, what I'm going to do is uh, just put everybody's names who commented in a hat and uh, draw it. Draw a name out. In fact, I'll do that right now. Okay, here's all the commenters. Gonna just pick a random one. Rook458, congratulations. You won this piece of jade. All I need you to do is, from this account, this YouTube account, send me an address, and I will send you this piece of jade. You gotta be in the United States, though, as I mentioned, because I can't afford shipping outside the United States. Okay, so as I said, this isn't going to make you rich. Um, right now, this is selling for about $10 a pound, this, this quality of, of uh, nephrite. But um, it's, it's a nice collector's item, and it's something that's hard to get. So uh, I think it'll be a pretty nice price. This is a sample someone sent me that sells for $200 a pound. This comes from Asia, and this is what the carvers are looking for. This is good quality carving jade. This is so far my best quality. Those actually aren't fractures, like they don't fall apart there. Those are refilled. It's kind of weird. Like you can see the fracture doesn't continue on the front. It was a fracture and then it got refilled. It's kind of strange. Anyways, uh, what is the difference between $10 jade and $200 jade? $10 a pound, $200 a pound. Um, the color, as you can see, is more vibrant. The grain is tighter, a little bit smoother. Um, this one, they both give a pretty sharp edge, which is good for carving. And uh, past that, I really couldn't tell you. I'm still trying to figure it out. I don't know what makes this worth so much less than this, other than predominantly the color and the fact, I mean, this has fractures as well. So um, let me turn the light off and show you one uh, way that people judge quality jade that I can tell on, on uh, from watching YouTube videos, though. Okay, so I have a flashlight up to mine, and you can see it gives a nice green color, which if you look at the, the one that I'm doing as a prize is more of a yellowish color. So I think the greener it is, the better it is, but it's not just that. Look at the amount of translucency in my jade. You can see it's shining through the side about a quarter of an inch or so. But then look at this high quality jade from China, and it's just... It's greener and it's clearly more translucent. You see that there? It's going through a good half an inch. Let me get right up to the edge like I was with the other one. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's more translucent and the color is more vibrant. So it doesn't just end there at $200 a pound. This is actually fairly cheap on the quality jade scale. Um, carving jade goes for a lot more than this. I've seen it on uh, YouTube videos, I was trying to get permission from uh, a guy who goes and films at the Myanmar Jade Market, uh, but just YouTube some of that, search for it on YouTube, and you'll see that there's some boulders about this size that are going for $200,000, $400,000. There's pieces that size going for a million dollars. They're usually jadeite, and they're way higher quality. 
And it's really hard to describe without showing you a picture, but I couldn't get permission to, to uh, use his footage, so uh, you'll have to search for that yourself. But I will say that there are some boulders out there that are going, that are, you know, maybe five or six times the size of this one and are going in the millions of dollars. That is crazy. You don't want to walk over something like that. And then from there, from the rough jade, you also have gym quality jade, which is, uh, this one I think is coming close. This is a piece of float jade that I found. Uh, but it's not there yet. But it's what, the gym quality jade is what they make necklaces and what are called bangles, which are just wristbands. And I'll show you one of these. They go for the millions of dollars. So, I mean, it's millions of dollars an ounce. And that just puts j or that just puts gold prices to shame. That's why I'm making this video. I think people owe it to themselves to realize how much jade is worth today. And this is another piece. This actually isn't jade, but this is a piece of uh, I think it's chrysoprase. It's it's a uh, green uh, silicate. This also comes from China, and uh, the same person who generously sent me that piece of Chinese carving jade to to uh, be able to start my prospecting with also sent me this from his personal mine, and uh, apparently this is going for close to $200 uh, a pound as well. So also something to keep an eye out for. But again, it's one of those things where the difference between this at $200 a pound and a piece of like um, green quartz at <laughs> 50 cents a pound, there's a huge, huge difference that depends on a lot of factors like grain and color and, and translucency and all of this. So what makes jade so valuable? I mean, I, I was kind of surprised. I grew up in Wyoming, and to me, they were always just kind of rocks that were sitting out. And I knew people had collected them, collected them, but I didn't know that they were that valuable. Well, in one word, it's the emerging dragon of the East. It's the Chinese market that's driving jade. Jade is a is a symbol of prestige for them. It can mean luck. It can, I mean, it means a lot of things that honestly I don't fully understand. So I'm not going to explain in this video, but a person can look it up on the internet. So I know that my subscriber base has grown substantially in the last few months, really. And uh, that's another reason I wanted to do this video because I wanted to mention that Jade, while pretty rare, can be found many places worldwide. Uh, Australia, New Zealand, um, Central America, Europe, various places, Asia, uh, Canada has some of the largest nephrite deposits in the world, uh, and in the U.S. jade can be found uh, kind of along the west coast. Um, I'm not sure about Oregon, but definitely California and Washington. I think maybe Oregon too, though, uh, up into British Columbia. Uh, most of the deposits here in Wyoming were depleted by the 50s or 60s because really the first jade rush in North America took place here, uh, and a lot of stuff is heavily, heavily picked over and bulldozed and kind of gone. But I think Canada or other spots in the U.S. might still have significant prospecting potential. Okay, so over the summer I've been prospecting for jade, obviously, and I was able to locate a couple mid-grade deposits along with this interesting one that's kind of white and green, but the white has a little bit of gray in it, so I think that devalues it. But this is a real interesting deposit that I wasn't able to revisit because I ended up breaking my hand. There's another larger piece of it right up there. And... Uh, I would like to go back there. I had initially planned for this video to half of it to be about mining this particular deposit. And uh, <laughs> I don't know if you can hear the wind. I'll, I'll cut to a shot of the wind here. It never ends. But the wind blows 40 miles per hour nonstop for six months straight out here. The, you know, the temperature drops to 10, 15 degrees. And with that much wind, it's just, it's crazy. But I'm still going to try to get out there. My hand is obviously not broken anymore. And uh, in a future video, I think, uh, I'll make it all about the jade mining process itself. And we'll see if this is, ends up being a valuable, valuable deposit or not. I can tell you, I will list some of this on eBay. and I'll, I'll list the results if I sell any. I can tell you that this jade, or more similarly, this kind of quality jade, I have been selling for $10 a pound on eBay. And if you look on eBay, though, man, I'll give some screenshots here of some of the stuff people are selling. All right, everyone, thanks for coming along on this little jade adventure with me. Um, I was planning on making a series of Guess This Rock, Win This Rock, but it didn't seem like there was a whole lot of interest. I think I ended up getting about 20 guesses, but I was thinking I was going to get 200 or 1,000 guesses. And uh, I think maybe I just made that 
contest too hard. But um, I don't know. We'll see. Going into the future, it's something I might do again. The main reason I wanted to do that Guess a Rock, Win a Rock and this video is just to show that there are a lot of rocks out there that can be more valuable than gold that really you could just walk right over. <laughs> and a lot of other people probably walk right over them and never realize that it's something that they really should be picking up. So thanks a lot for watching again and we'll see you next time when I'm actually out mining some jade.